Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Judith Patterson. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Texas. And on Fridays, I love to share with you how to create a card from the catalog. I think the catalogs are the best place to go to look for inspiration. Um, and in this case, we're actually gonna be doing a card from the Celebration brochure. We are halfway through Celebration already, which is mind boggling. And um, so I don't want to skip any of the fabulous cards that are in this brochure. There's no way we're gonna be able to do them all. But, um, but I do wanna do this one today using the Penguin Playmates 12 by 12 designer series paper. Isn't that adorable? So it's this card here. Um, and if you've watched my channel before, you know that sometimes I create cards from the catalog just like Stampin' Up! did. Um, I don't change anything. Sometimes I change a little bit, sometimes I change a lot, just depending on what I have handy. Um, and maybe what I like. So this one, the only thing that I'm changing, I think, yeah, the only thing I'm really changing is the, um, sentiment right here they used the messages die to cut out the sentiment it says happy birthday so I used the same stamp on my sample card let me see if I can get that up there so you can see that Oop. there we go this is harder than it looks y'all okay so it's kind of pale but you can see it so I used the same messages die only a different part of the die to cut out that sentiment this time I'm gonna skip the dot all together and we're just gonna cut around it and see what happens. I think it's gonna be cute. I think it's gonna be easy. So we'll see. Um, I love this card, it's so fun. I love this whole penguin place bundle. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's from the mini catalog. It's a super cute penguin stamp set and this penguin builder punch so you can stamp the penguin and then punch him out with the punch or you can just use cardstock and then add his eyes with a little stamp or a little bow tie so cute um so this is a really fun stamp set and and punch um, of course you can get either or but you get a 10 percent discount if you buy the bundle and get them both together um and if you don't know what Celebration is, so Stampin' Up! previously has only done Celebration once a year. It's usually at the first of the year, but this year we got a bonus Celebration and we're getting to do it again right now. Um, so what it is, is this entire brochure is full of fabulous products that you can earn for free with a qualifying purchase. So what is a qualifying purchase? Well, in the US, it's $50 or $100. There's two items that you can earn with a $100 purchase um, and everything else in the brochure is free with a $50 purchase in the US. It's different for other countries. Um, but they're all great items and you're not limited to earning just one. You can earn as many as you want um, and you can put together a party and earn the host set which it is like a greeting set it's called in your words super cute it's towards the end of the book um and it says things like hope your day is fantabulastic fantastic and fabulous all in one fabulous and fantastic all in one it's very tiny and i'm not wearing my glasses so had to do that from memory um anyway i hope you'll take this a look um let me know if you're interested in hosting a party online i can do zoom or facebook so it doesn't matter where you are as long as you're in the u.s um, and if you're interested in joining stampin up if you have a huge order that you want to make then i do recommend doing that you don't have to sell it you um, can just join and get the discount which is great. Um, it's $99 to join. And for that $99, you get free shipping. You get $125 worth of product that you pick. And during celebration, you can also choose 
a free bundle. Um, the bundles come from the mini catalog and there are some great ones listed in here. So they're in here in the celebration brochure on page 19. Um, and you can also find the list on my blog. So of course I will add um, a link to that in the comment or in the description below. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. I would love to have you on my team. All right, enough talking. Let's start stamping. Give me just a second and I'll switch this camera around and we'll get going. Hey, okay. So um, I've got my camera all turned around. Hopefully you can see this pretty clearly. I have a piece of, this is basic white cardstock. It's eight and a half by five and a half inches. Um, it's scored at four and a quarter inches. It's just a standard card, uh, card size. So I'm just creasing the fold here with my bone folder. So this is a piece of that penguin. I forgot what it's called already. Um, penguin Playmates designer series paper. And it has cut five and a half inches by four and a quarter inches so that it fits on the front of this card. And I will have all of the product links and the dimensions over on the blog post that goes along with this card, with this video. So um, I'll link that in the description as well. So you can just hop on over there if there's something a measurement that you need to look at real quick or if there's something you want to shop for you can just click on those links um, there's also going to be shopping links for the products used in the description so you don't even have to go to the blog post if you don't want to okay so that looks pretty good on the front of the card so I'm just going to set that to the side I'm going to grab this big eye block and I'm going to grab this small <laughs> It's a very thin um, stamp. It's like a hill. So I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna, yep. Let's see. I think the best way to do this is just let it sit naturally on my grid paper there. And I'll pick it up with my block. So I'm gonna use my pool party ink. And I'm gonna ink this up real good. And this is just um, a leftover piece of basic white cardstock. This isn't thick, it's just basic white. And I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna stamp here. I'm gonna ink this side up again. How silly was that? I didn't get it across the whole thing. So this isn't, your, your piece of paper here needs to be at least five and a half inches wide. Mine is six inches wide, so I don't need to go all the way across, but I don't know what I was thinking stamping off my page because of course I need to have as much of this stamp as I can get on here. Okay, there, that's much better. Oh, I remember. Okay, so it doesn't go all the way across silly okay so I just line that up because because this stamp is clear I could match it with the end there okay so now I'm gonna take this end I'm gonna have it go just like that to create another hill okay so now I'm gonna take um, another scrap of basic white and I just have a tray of them over here. I'm going to get the little hat. And I'm putting it on an A block. I'm going to get the penguin and put it on a C block. And I want the penguin that's on his tummy. Okay. I'm also going to get the beak and the nose and the wait the beak and the nose that was silly I need the beak and the feet 
Okay, so I'm going to put both of those on another A block. So I'm putting one on this side, and then I'm going to flip it over and put the other on the other side. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to grab my Tuxedo Black Memento Pad. And I'm going to ink my penguin up really well. So I'm going to stamp him right here. Oh, that looks good. All right, so I'm going to stamp. What I'm wanting here is his wing. So I'm just going to stamp this on the corner. There we go. Set that aside. Now I'm going to grab my Mango Melody. Close up my Tuxedo Black. And I'm going to use the Mango Melody to do his little foot and his little beak. Okay. Looking good. Then I'm going to get the Fresh Freesia and I'm going to stamp his hat. Perfection. Okay, so the last thing that we need to stamp, okay, it's not the last thing. The next thing that we need to stamp are the balloons. I've got one balloon here that I stamped previously. I don't want to waste it. I'm going to grab this other B block, I believe. Yep, it's a B block. I'm going to go ahead and do another balloon stamp. Okay, and now the final stamp is this happy birthday stamp. So what I'm actually going to do is grab a blending brush. And I'm going to use my Just Jade ink, and I'm very lightly going to just blend a soft Just Jade background. And then over that, I'm going to get the Happy Birthday stamp. And I'm out of A blocks, so I'm using a C block. And I'm stamping happy birthday on that nice light just jade background. Okay, so now what I need to do, well, first thing I need to do is clean my blending brush. Okay, and then I'm going to get my paper snips. And I'm going to cut out all these pieces. So I'm going to start with this one. And I'm going just above these snow lines. going to cut out the penguin. So unfortunately, the punch doesn't cut out this penguin. Um, it only cuts out the front facing penguin, but not the penguin on its belly. Can you see how mangled my hands look? Oh, it's terrible. So we have this kitten show up a couple of weeks ago, I guess it's been a couple of weeks, um, in our yard and in our pasture and just kind of all around. And um, then we have a catio. 
for our cats and our chihuahuas. So the thing got outside, but we don't have to worry about the coyotes getting them. And we have hawks too that catch small animals. So we don't have to worry about it with our catio because it's enclosed and it's covered. But um, this kitten found a spot that it could squeeze through somehow in our, and get in our catio with all of our animals. And our animals, for some whatever reason, they don't seem to care that this little kitten keeps coming inside their area. And um, so he ended up borrowing a small little live trap and catching it and took it to the vet the other day. And let me tell you, so we had, when once we got it in the live trap, we had put it in a bigger, um, like a play yard thing that was covered inside our catio so that it was still separated from our animals, but it could see them. Anyway, whenever we went to catch it, I say we, when I went to catch it to put it in the carrier to take to the vet, y'all, that cat was not happy. It was just a, it's a small kitten, but even small kitties can tear you up pretty good when um, they don't like what you're doing. And she did not want to be caught. And my poor hands are paying the price. Okay, so when I cut the second wing out, I left a little bit of a flap because I'm going to use that to glue it. I am cutting pretty close to the edge of the wing. Let me grab my, so this is a basic black Stampin' Rot marker. Um, I think this is the only Stampin' Rot marker that you can buy now on its own. So I'm going to use it to just kind of go over the edges of this and make it nice and dark. Um, give it a more finished look and make it look like it's really part of the penguin. Okay, that looks great. And then I'm going to go ahead, so I don't lose this piece, I'm going to go ahead and add that little bit of glue. I've already bent it down. Add a little bit of glue, maybe. I'm afraid to squeeze too hard because, okay, there it is. This is a full one, and I didn't want to get glue everywhere. Okay, so I'm placing this right over this other wing, and I'm just going to line it up. And you can see, I think, yeah, you can see where I got a little bit of extra ink right here. Maybe you can see. So I'm not really worried about that extra little blob of ink because I'm going to be using the twine and it'll cover that right up, I think. Oh, I don't want that to be glued down. There we go. Okay. So can you see its little wing is kind of flappy there? All right. So let's set that guy to the side. Throw that away. And we're going to cut out all these other little pieces. So here's the balloon. So I think we're, we named the kitten Ninja because she's really quiet and she can get in small spaces that she's not supposed to be in. And um, she's also kind of vicious. So, and she's solid black. She's got the biggest little eyes. I'll, I'll, I have a picture somewhere. I'll see if I can find it and I'll post it maybe with the uh, blog post if I think about it. Don't hold me to that. Um, but, so yeah, she's got huge eyes. And she's this teeny tiny little thing. Um, and she's tough as nails. And, and she's quiet. But she's so funny because she will, she's very chatty with our, we have um, a big cat, a big orange cat named Tiger. And so he's a real talker. Like he, he talks to us all day long, every day. He's just very, very chatty. And so when he gets close, 
she'll talk to him. She meows at him a lot in the sweet little meow that she does. But um, other than that, she's really very quiet. So if we can get her tame, now that she's been checked out by the vet and she's in good health and we had her spayed, of course, so we don't end up with kittens everywhere. Um, so if we can get her to chill out a little bit, I think we're going to keep her, especially since she already likes our other guys. Okay, so now this beak, I'm cutting it out very carefully, just leaving a little bit of a edge around it. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the foot. Technically, the foot, I could use the punch to cut out, um, but I figure since I'm already fussy cutting the rest of this, why not just fussy cut that too? Okay, so there's my beak. I'm gonna do the foot. I really love these paper snip scissors because they get in all these little tight spaces so well. They're really easy to use. Stay nice and sharp for a long, long time. Well, I say they stay nice and sharp. So the trick to keeping your scissors nice and sharp, mine have stayed very, very sharp. Only use them to cut cardstock. Don't cut ribbon with them. Don't try to cut metal or anything like that. Like you only want to use them for cardstock. Um, it's when you start using scissors to cut all different kinds of things that their blades start getting dull. So I have these, my paper snips are for my paper. Um, I have rubber scissors if I need to cut out rubber because back in the old days of Stampin' Up, our stamps didn't come ready to just punch out like they do now when they're, um, well, we didn't have the photopolymer at all. And the clean stamps, we had to cut around the stamp. So. It's great now that we don't have to do that, but I still have my rubber stamp, my rubber scissors from when we did. Um, I have ribbon scissors, then I have general all-purpose around the house scissors that I used to cut open like cardboard boxes and things like that. Okay, what else do we need to cut out? We have our balloons, we have our beak, our foot, our hat. So the happy birthday. Okay, so I said before in the catalog and in my example card here, we used, or Stampin' Up! used the messages die, and that's what I used. Let's see if I can, that's what I used to cut this too, was the uh, just a different part of the messages die. So, but for this one, just to keep things simple, so I'm just going to cut under the happy birthday. I'm going to cut over the happy birthday and then I'm going to come in at a diagonal and I'm going to cut beside the happy birthday. There we go. Easy breezy. That was so quick and simple and we didn't have to get out the um, amazing stamp cut and emboss machine. I love that machine um, but for something small like this it's not absolutely required okay so let's start putting this thing together so I'm gonna start with this piece and remember I cut mine big so I'm going to I'm going to line up, mm -hmm. I'm going to actually make mine kind of crooked because I want, no, nope, I'm going to leave it just like this. So I'm going to put it there 
and then I'm just gonna cut off the sides with my paper snips. And I'm gonna hope I don't get glue everywhere because I'm not really sure where the edge is gonna be. Okay, oh, this is what I can do. I'll line it up like this. And now I know where the edge is gonna be. Just kidding. I'm not leaving it hanging over both ends. Just the one end. Okay, so I'm just gluing that on and making sure that the edges are even on two sides. And on, on the final side, I'm gonna open that up. Everything looks great. So now I'm going to cut this. Okay, so now I'm gonna take just a dab of glue I'm going to add a dab of glue here, and I'm going to put it on the penguin. There we go. Then I'm going to add a dab of glue to his beak, and I mean just a tiny little bit. Can you still see what I'm doing? I'm always afraid I'm going to get off camera. That's why I like my, oh, it's one of the reasons why I like my grid paper because I can, kind of gives me an idea where I need to stay. Let's see, he's gonna be on his tummy. I think that looks good. And then for his hat, I'm gonna grab my glue again and just put a tiny little bit of glue on the edge of his hat here. And pop that on his head. Okay, so now I'm gonna put glue on the back of all that. Just a little dollop on his foot, some on his body, a little dollop on his beak, put his head in his hat. And then I'm gonna place him so that he's sliding down this hill right here. There we go. So now I'm going to get that twine and I'm going to get those ribbon scissors I was talking about. Yep, those are my ribbon scissors. I used to have ribbon actually tied to the handle, but I guess I lost that at some point. So this is Baker's twine and I need enough for both of my balloons to go up here. And then I'm going to let it hang off past the penguin a little. So. And it's okay if I cut them a little long, not a big deal, because I can always, always, always trim off some of the ends again. So to attach these balloons, I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm going to also use the dimensionals to attach the twine. Okay, so... Set the twine right there, and I'm going to put the dimensional over it. Make sure it's not overlapping my balloon. I'll put another one there, and then same thing with this piece. I just threw that piece across my desk. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to just stick it up where it's sticking up a little bit, and then I'm going to use that dimensional to hold it down. Okay, so now I can place my balloons and I want them, I don't want them like this. I don't want them where they're floating up because he's sliding down so they're gonna be angled like they're flying behind him. So almost on their sides. And a lot of times when I overlap things like this, I'll add like a dab of glue and glue this to the other balloon, but I don't think I need to do that with these two dimensionals. So make sure that your dimensionals are not on top of the other balloon. I'm gonna move that just a smidge. I don't want it quite so high up. And there, I got it on the balloon again. Okay, that looks good. 
No, that doesn't look good because, okay, I think I'm overthinking this. What do y'all think? There we go. That works. All right. So what I'm going to do now is add a little bit of glue. Actually, no, I'm going to use a glue dot. And I'm going to get my take your pick tool to grab a glue dot off of the glue dot roll. And I'm going to put this glue dot right inside his wing here. Maybe. There we go. And then I'm going to put the twine on top of that glue dot and kind of close his wing over it. And then I'm just going to take my paper snips and snip off the ends of this twine because it really didn't need to be that long. Okay, there we go. So that part looks great. We're almost finished. So I'm going to grab the happy birthday, and this time I am. I'm going to put Stampin' Dimensional on the end with the Y's. So right here, too high up. I'm going to lower that down a little. And you could also use a mini dimensional for this if you um, would feel better about doing that. And then I'm going to add a little bit of glue to this side. Okay. So now I'm going to let that overlap this balloon here. What do you think? So there's this one that we just cut. There's this one that used this rectangle piece um, from the messages die. And then the catalog used this part of the messages die. I know that keeps going blurry. There you go. Now you can see it. So, which one do you like better? I don't really know which one I like better. I think, honestly, my favorite one is this one. I really like that. Okay, so almost done. I'm going to grab my Take Your Pick tool. And I'm going to get one of these jewels from the 2021-2023 in color jewels. I love these. So this is just going to go right on the tippy tip of his little toboggan here. All right, so the front of our card is complete. Now, unfortunately, the majority of the time in the catalog, they don't show us what's on the inside of the card. Um, but I think that for the inside of this card, I want to have him sitting up. So I'm going to grab some scraps out of my drawer here. Here's a black. So I'm going to do the punch. And I'm going to use the punch to cut out a black body. Ooh. And then I'm going to use the punch to cut out his white. And see that side has ink on it, but that's okay. I'm just going to flip it over and punch out this for his body. Then I'm gonna grab a scrap of Mango Melody. Do, 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 do. My scrap folder is empty. That's so sad. So instead of um, grabbing a scrap, I'm just gonna use the corner of my folder here that I use to organize my scraps because this is a piece of Mango Melody, so why not? And I'm gonna punch out one two feet. Okay, that foot flew. Okay, so then the next thing is I'm gonna try. I accidentally, for some reason, I locked my stamp as, I, or not my stamp, my punch as I was punching, so I didn't punch as clear as it could have. So I'll just clean that up a little bit. Now we're good. And then I'm gonna use um, I'm just going to grab this block and this funny looking stamp here, that's his eyes. Okay, so I'm going to put that here. I'm going to get that memento ink and ink that up again. There we go. 
and then I'm going to stamp his eyes. And I'm stamping pretty high. I don't want him to look funny, but okay, there we go. One more thing. I want him to have a bow tie. So I'm going to get the purple to match the toboggan. And by purple, I do mean fresh freesia. Um, let's see. I'm going to grab the bow tie. Here we go. Put that on here. I've just got blocks everywhere now. And I'm going to put the little bow tie right on his little body. Ta-da! Okay. Now, it's time to glue him together. So, look how messy my space is getting. Do y'all get messy whenever you're stamping? Or does your place stay nice and neat? I always have intentions of being nice and neat. But, I'm not going to lie. It gets pretty messy. Okay, so this goes all the way to the bottom. I always want to put it higher up. But... It looks like it goes towards the bottom. Nope, just kidding. Bring it up a little. Da, 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 da. Make sure it's centered. So that looks pretty good. I like this glue because I could, I could move it a little bit. Okay. So my final piece. I need two more things. I need so that beak that I kept calling a nose earlier. I'm grabbing it again. I'm going to put it on the other side of the... So I have a stamp here and then I flip it over and I have a stamp here. And I'm going to get that Mango Melody ink again because he does need a nose, don't you think? I think. So I'm going to put that nose whoa, right there. A little crooked, but that's okay. And then I'm going to add some glue here. Put one little foot there. And I'm going to flip this over. And I'm going to put one little foot. Ah! Okay. Here. So he's sitting a little crooked too. But that's good. There we go. Alright, now for the inside of the card. I've lost the card. Here's the card. For the inside of the card, all we're going to do is take this little guy and glue him. I'm going to use the take your pick tool to pick it up. There we go. That was so much easier. Alright, so I'm just putting him right here. So when you open the card, you have a nice little surprise pink. Gwen, do you hear that crying? That's my chihuahua. He's in the house, but he really wants to be in my craft room with me. So he's throwing a little temper tantrum. He thinks he'll get his way that way. And I'm not going to lie. Usually he does. He's quite spoiled. Okay. Yep, that's all we need to do. I'm trying to think if I want to add. So here's the everything that this one says. Yeah, I think that's good. I don't think we need to add anything else to the inside. What do you think? So there's the outside once again. And there's our adorable inside. And there it is. There it's clear. Okay. So thank you so much for stamping with me. I know this was a little bit longer than typical. I think it's um, all that fussy cutting and all that chatting at the beginning. But um, thanks so much for sticking through to the end with me. And um, if there's anything that I can do to help you out with your stamping, your card making, with stamping up, just let me know. I would love to, to help you and answer any questions that you have. It's what I'm here for. So y'all have a great day. Happy stamping. And if you liked this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button or that thumbs up. Thanks so much.